For more than a century, aircraft carriers have been a key argument in naval battles. These immensely powerful machines of incredible size are capable of controlling situations not only in the water, but also in the air. The hero of our review today is the aircraft carrier John F. Kennedy, one of the most modern and also the most expensive ships in the world. Let's find out together what's so special about this American development and what the future has in store for it. It's military news. Let's go. So back in 2008, the U.S. launched a program to build perfect ships, like the Gerald R. Ford, the namesake of the first ship in this series. Of course, at the moment, to realize the conceived plan to its fullest, out of 10 planned aircraft carriers, only four have reached the stage of development. And if everything is more or less clear with the first one, it's been furrowing the seas for five years. The second aircraft carrier is of particular interest to us. The construction of such a large-scale project was entrusted to specialists of Huntington Ingalls Industries who worked at the Newport News shipyard located in Virginia. By the way, this is the only yard in the United States capable of building nuclear-powered ships. Work began in 2010, but the official laying of the keel occurred only in 2015. The launch was scheduled for 2019. The daughter of the 35th president, Caroline Kennedy, took part in the ceremony. By the way, she attended a similar event 52 years earlier during the birth of the combat CV-67, also named after her father. Now the aircraft carrier is 80% complete and further work on it will be done afloat. The transfer of the ship to the U.S. Navy is scheduled for 2024. Whether American engineers will meet the deadline, we'll find out very soon. Around the name of the giant, with a board number CVN-79, there were a lot of controversies. Even before construction began, the project was nearly named the USS Arizona, marking the 66th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor. Then Congressman John Sheedig suggested naming the ship Barry Goldwater after the late Arizona Senator, but in the end, the aircraft carrier was named after the President of the United States who served in the Navy during World War II. The Kennedy, along with other aircraft carriers of this type, is to replace the Nimitz-type ships that have been in service since as far back as 1975. Unlike its predecessors, the CVN-79 has a lower radar signature, helped by stealth technology. Our hero has excellent technical characteristics. It's 337 meters long and 78 meters wide. The ship's hull is larger than three soccer fields. The Kennedy's displacement is about 100,000 tons. The Kennedy can accommodate 90 aircraft, including Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II strike fighters, Boeing F-A-18EF Super Hornet deck combat fighters, E-2D Advanced Hawkeye Scout Jets, EA-18G Growler deck combat jets, MH-60RS landing helicopters, and various UAVs. All of these aircraft are capable of about 160 sorties per day, rising to 220 sorties in extreme combat conditions. An interesting difference from its predecessor is that the new ship uses the latest electromagnetic catapult, EMALS, replacing the steam-powered catapult used on the Nimitz class. Steam units were developed in the 1950s and were extremely reliable. However, massive and difficult-to-control catapults could only launch heavy aircraft, such as the EA-6 Prowler. As for light aircraft, which include, for example, drones so urgent in the 21st century, such equipment could do them harm. In addition to EMOS comes an upgraded braking system known as AAG. These innovations have improved the controllability of aircraft takeoff and landing, minimized extreme stresses on pilots and aircraft, and in general increased the safety of deck operations. An additional plus is that the abandonment of steam equipment has significantly reduced the corrosion rate of shipboard systems. I'd like to pay special attention to the Bechtel A1B nuclear reactor designed specifically for the Ford class. Kennedy is equipped with two such units, each capable of generating 300 megawatts of power, three times the capacity of the A4W installed on its predecessor. The new units have a simpler design, with half the number of valves, piping, main pumps, condensers, and generators. These improvements reduce costs as well as maintenance effort by 50%. The reactors, which drive four ship propellers, propel the CVN-79 to a top speed of 30 knots, an average city speed of a car, by the way, 56 kilometers an hour. The new nuclear propulsion system should allow the aircraft carrier to operate for 
mind you, a full 50 years without refueling. For comparison, USS Enterprise could work without refueling for only 13 years. Another important innovation of this ship is a three-line phased array radar, ESER, Enterprise Air Surveillance Radar. This technology replaces the dual-band radar, DBR, installed on Gerald Ford. It differs from its predecessor not only in size, which has been reduced by 20%, but also in its ability to operate in high-interference, near-ground, and electromagnetic interference environments. An improved weapons control system and a higher level of automation have made it possible to reduce the crew by 700 people. Thus, the total number of soldiers, including the air group and staff officers, was about 5,000. Improvements also affect the ship's interior, living conditions on board became more comfortable, a gymnasium, and even a maternity ward were added. The armament of our aircraft carrier includes various types of missiles. This is a medium-range missile, RIM-162 SM, manufactured by Raytheon. This type of weapon is designed to counter high-speed and maneuverable anti-ship missiles at ranges of up to 50 kilometers and has a semi-active radar homing head. The RIM-116 short-range infrared homing missiles, jointly manufactured by America and Germany, they're designed for a range of 500 meters to 10 kilometers with a minimum target height of 4 meters. In addition, there are several guns, namely two phalanx of 20mm caliber capable of producing 50 rounds per second, as well as four older but proven M2s known as the Browning machine gun. These guns, caliber 12.7mm, have a rate of fire of about 500 rounds per minute. In addition, there's the possibility of installing laser or railgun armament on the aircraft carrier. Engineers have designed the ship so that in the future, it'll be possible to integrate unforeseen technological advances. Thanks to this, the ship is to remain in service for 90 years, which is up to 2105. This high-profile and truly large-scale project cost America, just think about it, $13 billion. The price of the marine vessel turned out to be truly cosmic. And this is just one specimen. And the U.S. authorities are not going to stop there. There are still plans to produce the remaining vessels with an interval of five years for each. Thus, the creation of fellow John F. Kennedy is planned until 2058. It's still hard to say whether such a price is justified for just one aircraft carrier, although it looks, well, very impressive indeed. I hope you enjoyed my review. Be sure to share your feedback in the comments below this video, and don't forget to like and subscribe. There are a lot more interesting things to come. See you soon.